Hello, my name is Sharon Lee. My Korean name is Yi Sonhae. Yi is my surname, which translates to Lee, and Sonhae means goodness and wisdom. I am speaking to you today from the beautiful city of Victoria, British Columbia, on the traditional territories of the Wysanic, Esquimalt, and Songhees First Nations. Today I will be reading to you a medley of poems related to um, a number of topics from um, nature to romantic relationships to sisterhood, intergenerational trauma, um, identity, etc. So the first poem that I will be reading to you is called On the Other Side of Johnson Bridge and that's the reason why I've selected this location to read to you because Johnson Bridge is just over there. On the other side of Johnson Bridge. On Sundays we sit by Johnson Bridge, anchored by blue chairs and blueberry danishes. We need sustenance before the unearthing. This is our weekly ritual. We float our flaws like jagged driftwood, voice contentions, offer insecurities, vulnerabilities, Discomfort at times bulges between us. Sometimes there is silence, sharp like shards. We've learned why they say relationships take work. Our work is deterring discrepancies from accumulating like tangled kelp. All weed, no water, impossible redemption. To avoid this, we sit and air our angst on eclectic vexations. Burnt salami, spurn masks, over vinegared soup, the pollution of harbored baggage. Sometimes it's a day's work, but never longer, because early on we promised never take resentments to bed. Instead, by nightfall, we arrive at the harbor's edge, hands held, waters turned translucent. So I moved to Victoria late um, 2019 and prior to moving to Victoria I was not a coffee drinker whatsoever but there was something about the coffee shops here that I found um, just super wonderful and I got really into to coffee and of course um, as a writer it's wonderful sitting down at a coffee shop and getting in a writing session. So this poem that I'm about to read to you is inspired by one of the local coffee shops here. It's called Coffee Crush. His lips are stained with mulberry blood from the Danish he devoured for breakfast. His lips brooding and sweet match his mopey shoulders and mocha hair. He crafts cappuccinos while I pretend to contemplate items behind the barista bar. A Pinocchio nose flame headed astronaut, a dreadlocked pirate over bricks and mirrors, a stegosaurus mounting a black bear. But none of these is intriguing, not as much as his energetic essence, potent as triple espresso. He's a mysterious blend of masculine and feminine, slenderness and full flavor, sadness and birthday delight. His jaw is an iron scorpion, strong and sharp, his lips like thornless roses, his eyes brighter than the neon veins of the potted plant above the pastries display. He catches my assessment of his disposition and spills a coy smile, smooth as sweet chai. Red-cheeked, I look away and suddenly crave the same Danish he devoured for breakfast. I settle instead for my single latte, decaf, no sugar. The next poem that I wrote is one that I composed after hiking the Juan de Fuca Trail with one of my best friends, Disha Garcha. And the poem is called Juan de Fuca Trail. Our purpose is clear. Practice persistence, be nourished by nature, walk with sisters birthed by other wombs. But we plunge, a quick slip on wet wood, deceived by something of substance, something meant to hold us over messy ground. In our rapid descent, fears are realized. Our undertaking has exceeded our capacity. Failure is imminent. We reprimand ourselves for cutting ties with common sense, for thinking our single backs can carry the weight of all our needs. Yet, we do not plunge into thicker mud. We reach for each other's hands and are reminded of warmth and solace and grit. 
Together we breathe the sweet spice of pine, hear the surge of river waters, and we are soothed, invigorated. We hush the wails of muddied skin, blistered egos, and we realize our discomfort is chosen. Unlike the pains of our Korean mothers and Indian grandmothers, and we realize the privilege in the choices we have made. Together, we do not let defeat seep deep as marrow, do not let ragged rhythms of heavy breath deter us. We imagine camp, the soft down of sleeping bags that will hold us like pined after lovers. We are comforted in learning how the present exists, its perpetual vanishing, discomfort diminishing, with each step towards nightly stillness. This next poem that I'm gonna read, it has a special place in my heart because it's one that I wrote, um, it's the first one that I wrote aside from like a school assignment. And I wrote it after um, moving to Jiangmen, China for my first job as a teacher. And it was a time when I was experiencing um, culture shock and homesickness and also heartbreak and um, I basically, you know, for the first time really asked myself the big question, who am I? And this was the poem that resulted from that. And this poem is called Identity. You weave and wander through crowds and cobwebs, seen and unseen. Your escape from predictable paths is no longer marred by scars you wish to forget. Your maverick tracks no longer distract you from the ugliness of yourself. You trek through murky waters to pristine lakes. In clear reflections, you see yourself in skies. Your clothes are muddied by waved expectations and independent assurance, but you do not wash your shirt from fear of disapproval. When interpreted in ways you do not intend, you remain firm yet free remembering your essence present in cosmic breezes. You find silence and serenity in fresh dawns and sleeping puddles, forgoing the chaos of a troubled mind. Whenever tempted of apathy or addiction, you revel in your stable breath, the pulse of perpetual presence. The next poem that I will be reading to you is from this book, The Sky is Falling, The Sky is Falling and it's a collection of pandemic poems edited by Sheila Martindale and supported by Planet Earth Poetry. And the poem that I'll be reading is called Windows. Nose pressed to sunlit panes, I picture us. Our tongues topped with cherry pie, drip coffee on our lips, tangled limbs. Apart, I miss your love loud like ocean seagulls. I miss our feet on fresh concrete, sipping soup at Asian eateries, your fingertips against my teeth. Alone, I sip matcha from my chipped mug and think of your missing hands. I peer at skies painted gray above my desolate desk. By noon, the mirror is skewed. Pupils in disparate directions, wide grins of feigned glee, mad like frothing horses. I examine cracks on my feet, tangles and shadows of brittle hair, the undersides of darkened parts. To shake my perspective, I hang upside down from white tabletops, climb walls to secret ceilings, wash myself from toe to head. Before bed, nose pressed to moonlit panes, I count the stars through murky clouds. Lessons. We learned early on the ache of missing someone, of missing the first man who was supposed to love you, of missing a father turned absent through toxic nights to earn immigrant dollars. We learned early on what a body without presence, without spirit, without vitality looks like, what unmet expectations feel like, what it does to internalize another's misery as one's own deficiency, of thinking the depression of another is the outcome of not having been enough. We learned early on to fear the switch, the outpour of emotion, anger, resentment, bottled demons unleashed, the pain of leaving home, of making one's way in a new place, of forgetting residues of war. 
We learned early on to coil inwards, to keep secret the pains of our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, the trickling of trauma from generation to generation. But now we have learned to acknowledge where we have come from, to learn the hurt and the history, to exercise responsibility, to free ourselves, to walk with lightened loads, to lessen the baggage that is passed down so that years from now, our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren can walk nimbly with spirit and vitality.